In doubles and in singles, I'm a huge proponent of my students coming forwards and getting to the net. Really in doubles especially, I like to see both players up at the nets, and so serving and volleying and returning and volleying are two very, very necessary skills if you want to raise the level of your game. And in this video, I want to show a really good example of a player taking a little bit off his return, but controlling it well so that he can position himself aggressively very quickly up at the net. I'm going to play this video in full speed first, and then we'll break it down quickly. So check this out. So the, the main thing that this player did well was that he, I, I want you guys to notice, he watch, watch his shadow here on the left side. He's already moving forwards. The person who's serving has just put his toss up. Look at the returner as he's moving forwards. He takes a split step, kind of a couple of shuffle steps here to get himself in balance, which is very important. If you guys are going to copy this, make sure that you're in balance as you move forwards. Don't just literally run forwards towards the oncoming serve because you'll end up jamming yourself up or finding it very difficult to move to the right or to the left if your opponent hits a good serve. So as he moves forwards, he takes a couple of quick little shuffle steps and watch the technique he uses. He only takes his racket back to about even with his body. It looks like he's setting up for a volley here. He makes contact in front of him, extends through the ball, and continues moving his feet as he makes contact. And, and really, this is essentially a volley stroke. Let's take a look at that again. You see a couple of stutter steps, racket out, and then just guides the ball forwards as he moves in. And it's all about keeping the feet moving, being in balance, and keeping the racket in front of him. And when he takes it this early, I mean, his left foot here, let's see, as he makes contact, it looks like his racket is probably five feet behind the, base, uh, the service line or so, and his momentum is carrying forwards. So the service partner could be looking to poach on this because it's not a very strong return, but because this returner moves in so quickly, it really leaves the server's partner with very little time to react to this return, even though it's not very powerful. And this is something that I personally do when when my aggressive returns and doubles are not working very well. If I'm making a lot of unforced errors, uh, especially if I'm making a lot of errors, I will just go to a continental grip and move forwards a little bit farther into the courts and just block my returns as I move forwards. And as long as the service partner isn't really active, you can usually get away with this. And now, now that both players are inside the service line, it puts a lot of pressure on that server. He, he selected to stay back at the baseline, which keeps him in a much more defensive position. And now we see the two players up at the nets who were returning the serve, and they're very clearly in control of this point. And the server realizes this, rather than risk trying to hit a passing shot, which is going to be difficult, he just throws up a lob. And now we see the server's partner wisely start backing up. He's taking a bunch of steps back to try to put himself in a better position to react to the oncoming overhead here. And in my opinion, this overhead should have gone more towards the server's partner, because as you can see, let's see, when contact was made with that overhead, the server's partner was uh, probably looks like about 15, maybe 18 feet in front of the server. There's 18 feet between the service line and the baseline, and it looks like these guys are about 18 feet apart, um, and that's significant. If you can uh, if you can direct this overhead towards the net player or towards the, the server's partner, they're going to have a lot less time to react to this shot. But it was still a well-struck overhead. The server tries to lob again. See the server's partner still backing up, which puts the two net players in a very good position. And the lob ends up being out. So this was all initiated. This was all set up by that well-controlled return of serve and the aggressive position that the returner put himself in. And that just puts the server and the server's partner back in a very defensive position. And the server now has to hit a really nice lob or a really nice passing shot to win the points. And that just puts a lot of pressure on the server and the service partner. 
So try using this, guys, in your own play. It doesn't have to be a big, powerful return. It just has to be placed well. And if you can move in and take time away from that server's partner so that it's difficult for him to, to cross and poach on your return, even better. But I think this was an excellent play and something that if you can put into your own game, I think will definitely get you some more points.